Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about externalities. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. First thing we've got to do is go over some definitions. An externality is a cost or benefit of any product, good or service, that falls on people who don't buy or produce the product. Those externalities can be negative or positive. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is those negative externalities. Those are those external costs that fall on people who don't make or produce the product. It could be pollution, traffic congestion, odd smells, and countless other things where there is a cost or a drawback that people who don't buy or produce the product face as a result of this product. Negative externalities are sometimes called spillover costs. Positive externalities, on the other hand, are external benefits that fall on the people who don't buy or produce the product. Those positive externalities could come in the form of beautiful music filling a local park, the renovation of a neighborhood, or local security cameras that monitor an area. Positive externalities are sometimes called spillover benefits, and that's because they spill over out of the market and onto people who aren't involved in the purchase or sale of these products. Now, when it comes to positive and negative externalities, one way they could be produced is a result of the consumption of a product. These are called externalities in consumption. That means that the spillover costs or benefits will be caused by the consumption of a particular good or service. Some examples of externalities and consumption are the leftover cigarette butts after somebody finishes a cigarette. It could be the smog created by people driving their cars. And we could have a positive externality and consumption in the form of the beautiful landscaping that your neighbor puts in. And finally, vaccinations provide some protection to those nearby who don't get the vaccination. All of these are examples of external benefits or costs that are created as a result of consumption of a good or service. And as a result, we call them externalities in consumption. We also have externalities in production, and those are spillover costs or benefits that are created by the producers of a product. We could have negative externalities in the production in the form of factory pollution and pesticides that are used by farmers. And we have positive externalities in production like bees pollinating a nearby orchard as a result of producing honey. And job safety training programs that lead to greater safety for the rest of society. Now it's time to put these externalities on the graph. We're going to start off with a regular old supply and demand graph. And if you remember from unit two, you may have seen some AP economics questions talking about how there are no externalities within a market. And that's because up to that point within this class, we were assuming that they didn't exist. Now we're acknowledging the reality that some products have externalities. And so we now have a negative externality in production that we're going to graph out. So we're going to start off with a regular old market with quantity on that X axis and price on the Y axis. Downward sloping demand curve labeled D, upward sloping supply curve labeled S, and our equilibrium price and quantity found at the intersection of the supply and demand curves. Now, since we're graphing a negative externality, that demand curve is going to also be the marginal private benefit, or MPB, as well as the marginal social benefit, because all benefits for this product fall on the people that are buying the product. Now, the supply curve is going to be the marginal private cost. That's the cost that producers face as a result of producing this product. But there is an external cost to people who don't buy the product. That external cost is going to be added to the marginal private cost to give us a marginal social cost curve that is above the supply curve. Now the allocatively efficient or socially optimal quantity is not found at that equilibrium point where supply equals demand. The true socially optimal quantity is going to be found at the intersection between the marginal social cost and that marginal social benefit. So find that intersection and drop down and that gives us QO here. That's our optimal quantity. And without any government intervention, we aren't going to be at that allocatively efficient quantity. We're going to be at the equilibrium quantity here. So that means we're going to have some dead weight loss. We can find that dead weight loss with three points on this graph. First, from the current quantity, the market quantity, we find the true marginal social benefit. And then we head up until we find the marginal social cost. That gives us two points. The third point is the point where the marginal social cost equals that marginal social benefit. That gives us the three points of dead weight loss. You'll notice that the dead weight loss triangle always points to that allocatively efficient quantity, QO, right here. And if we had numbers on this graph, we could calculate the value of the dead weight loss by finding the area of that triangle. 
Now, so far on the AP microeconomics exam, that is the graph that you have seen most in regards to negative externalities. But there is another graph you could see, and that is a negative externality in consumption. On this graph, we're going to take the marginal social benefit curve and subtract that external cost. And that's because the consumers are producing that negative externality. So we are going to subtract that external cost to give us a net marginal social benefit. That is the true benefit of this product once we subtract the external costs created by the consumption from those demanders in the demand curve. And so again, you find that allocatively efficient quantity where the marginal social cost equals the marginal social benefit right there labeled QO. And again, we are overproducing within this market as a result of this negative consumption externality. We can find that deadweight loss again at the market quantity. You find the marginal social benefit of that quantity the marginal social cost of that quantity, and then the allocatively efficient point where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. That gives us our triangle of dead weight loss. Now we're going to move on to positive externalities and we're going to first start off with the more common graph. These are positive externalities in consumption. Here we have the marginal social cost and marginal private cost up there on the supply curve. And that demand curve down there is the marginal private benefit for the consumption of this product. And since the consumers are the ones producing this positive externality and it results from their consumption, we are going to add this external benefit to the demand curve here to give us a higher marginal social benefit curve that is above the demand. And we can see our allocatively efficient quantity or socially optimal quantity is where that marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost, labeled QO here again. And to find the deadweight loss, you once again find three points. First, the marginal social cost at the quantity that we have within the market, the marginal social benefit for the quantity within that market, and the third point is the marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit point. That gives us three points of deadweight loss. If there are numbers and you can calculate the area of that, that gives us the value of the deadweight loss. And when it comes to positive externalities, so far in the AP microeconomics exam, that's the graph that you've seen most. There is another way of graphing positive externalities, and that results from positive externalities that are caused by the production of a product. And when we graph out a positive externality in production, we are going to subtract that external benefit from the supply curve to give us a lower marginal social cost curve. Because there are external benefits resulting from the production from those suppliers in the supply curve, it gives us a lower marginal social cost curve. And once again, that allocatively efficient quantity is found where the marginal social benefit equals that marginal social cost, QO right there. And once again, we have dead weight loss and you find it from the market quantity, the marginal social cost curve, the marginal social benefit curve, and then the third point, being where the marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost. And again, that is our dead weight loss triangle. So when it comes to externalities, we have a clear market failure. The free market has failed to achieve the allocatively efficient outcome. And we have dead weight loss as a result. We have overproduction with negative externalities and underproduction with positive externalities. And we can correct that misallocation of resources through some government intervention. When it comes to negative externalities, the government can have quantity restrictions on the production of a product. There could be pollution permits that are issued called cap and trade, and we could have per unit taxes. When it comes to the AP microeconomics exam, the preferred answer is going to be per unit taxes on the production of these products. Let's take a look at how those per unit taxes can achieve that socially optimal outcome on the graph here. If we put a per unit tax on this product that is equal to that external cost, the gap between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost, that will cause the supply curve to shift to the left, the vertical distance of that tax. And that will give us the new post-tax quantity that is the allocatively efficient quantity. The new price of the product paid by consumers is going to be PT right there. And the price the sellers receive after paying the tax is down there labeled PS. Most importantly, this per unit tax will eliminate dead weight loss if we can get the tax just right. We could do the same thing in the negative externality and consumption graph as well. And we could actually put the tax on the consumers and shift that demand curve also. Either way, we are trying to shift the quantity to be that allocatively efficient quantity through a per unit tax equal to that external cost. When it comes to correcting for positive externalities, we could again have some regulations from the government. We could also have some public provision. That means the government actually provides the product or we could have per unit subsidies to the producers of this product. And the preferred answer on the AP microeconomics exam is going to be per unit subsidies. Let's take a look at how those appear 
on the graph. This is a positive externality and consumption graph. And if we grant the consumers of this product a per unit subsidy that is equal to that external benefit, that's the gap between the marginal private benefit and that marginal social benefit curve, that will shift the demand curve to the right until it merges with that marginal social benefit curve. And then our new post-subsidy quantity will be that allocatively efficient quantity labeled QO for socially optimal right there. The out-of-pocket expense that consumers pay for this product will be found there at PC and the price that sellers receive after the subsidy is up there at PS. And once again, that per unit subsidy is going to eliminate deadweight loss if we can get that subsidy just right. And of course, we could also grant that subsidy to the producers of this product and shift that supply curve instead bringing us still to that allocatively efficient quantity. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about positive and negative externalities. Just one of our market failures that you need to know. If you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. That's all for now. I'll see you all next time.